Okay, so this week's course is Crawley Mountain Golf Course, and it is a 18-hole course, a slope 139 course from the back tees, and it is located just northwest of the Charlotte Interchange on 85. It's on 85. You go off 85 to get to the little road, and it's, it's in the, a park called Crawley Mountain Park, just northwest of Charlotte. And I can't think of the exact name of the town. It's like, but in any case, it's on the title. And this course is actually a pretty challenging course. I would have to say that there were, out of all the holes on the course, out of 18 holes, there may have been, there may have been five fairly easy holes. There were at least a, num a matching number of fairly challenging holes. And there were some holes that were very tough. And I, I can't say it was too hard overall. The reason I picked this course is I didn't want to play a course that was too hard or too easy. I wanted to play one that was around 140, but not one that was 140 because it had really tough greens or a lot of waste or a lot of sand or a lot of fescue, especially fescue around the, the woods or deep woods. I wanted a chance, if I did hit the ball off the fairway, to at least be able to go near the woods, poke around a little bit, and find my ball. I didn't want it, of course, where if you go off the off the rough into the woods, it's gone. So I checked it carefully from the shots of the course. There's a few shots of the course. I believe there are a few shots of the course on the website. Yeah, 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 definitely are. And also, I wanted to play a mountain course, because I, I like these kind of mountain courses for a number of reasons. One, they tend to have a, a, a pretty good amount of verticality. Second, they tend not to have really wide fairways. So they do have a decent pressure on your drives and approaches. Not too much, but definitely some, rather than a course with this, you know, 100 yard wide fairway or, and, you know, and trees and with nothing under the trees, you know. I definitely didn't want to play that kind of a course. And the third thing I wanted was a course that was not surrounded by houses. That was a definite criteria for this round. I've played the last two or three courses I've played, at least one of them was just chock full of houses. And the other one was like moderately full of houses. I think the last one I played, which was Brian Park, didn't have any houses on the course. And I wanted another cor another course like that that didn't have any houses on the course. So after going through all of the courses in the state on the USGA database that were on there and picking out the ones that were, you know, 135 or higher and then weeding out the ones that I couldn't get on because they were private or the ones that I didn't want to play because they were flat or stuff like that, I, I you know, had found maybe 10 interesting courses to play on first examination that I figured would get me through the next month or so, next month or two. So it was a matter of picking one that I wanted to play first out of these 10. And that was interesting because where this course is, there are actually three or four other courses that also met my interests. They are not quite courses like this one, but they're still, you know, fairly challenging. The The first thing I think that one has to do when picking a course that you've never played before and go out and playing is you have to be fairly confident you can get on it. So it, it does help to see if they will sell you a tee time on the course website. That's one thing that I try to look for. In this course, in this case, there was enough indication to say that you could call up and get a tee time and no indication it was a private course or a resort course, which is a, another problem they have out here. They have a, a fair amount of resort courses. And it's odd because there's a lot of Nicholas courses down here that are 148, 149 slope courses, but they almost all are private courses. And you do see a lot of private courses that are restricted with really high slope course, uh, courses on there. So anyway, long story short, short story, more interesting. I go out there to play the course. I got there about one o'clock and the guy was like, it's $25 for 18 with a cart. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> $25, you know, 
love it when you get on a good course that's cheap at a good time. It's not crowded. I was like almost the last person on the course that day. And I really did have a good time playing this course. It was appropriately difficult for what I was looking for. The only real problem I had, and this was, and it was one hole, and I, I appreciate the fact it was one hole, but still, this is something you definitely want to keep in mind when you come out here to play. The number two fairway and green are a slight crescent down to a creek and then back up sort of a 30 degree slope to the green. It's a pretty good slope up to the greens, at least, I would say, 50 feet above the bottom of the, the fairway. But there's a road that goes right alongside of it. And you can see from the tee box, there's a down slope, you know, where the green is, and there's cars coming down and, you know, coming down there. And you can, you know, like, and it's, it's so close to the fairway that I didn't want to take a chance to, to, to tee off while they were coming down you know, this, this hill. So I had two things. One, the cars were coming from right off my right-hand shoulder from the road that comes down to, turns to the road to go through the course. And most of those cars were going straight down the road by the fairway. The second thing is there were a fair number of cars coming from, it was like a, like a bowling chute. You see where the ball returns, you know, out of the bowling chute. They drop down out of the trees and come down the road. So was, I was trying to time it between the cars coming from behind me and the cars coming from ahead of me. And it was, it was a challenge. It, I, I had to kind of wait a couple of minutes to get a good shot there where there were no cars on the road next to me. And finally I got out there, teed off and everything. And I still had to play up to the green and the green is on the right side of the fairway over there next to the road, you know? And so it's all, it, it's, it was a challenge to, to play that hole and not put a ball on the road because one of the hardest things to do in golf is to not hit a shot that you're trying not to hit. Most of the time when you're trying not to hit a ball somewhere, it goes there because you'll overcompensate away from the shot you don't want to hit. And just in overcompensating, you're almost always going to put a little spin in the ball and that spin is going to run it over to where you don't want it to go. So you have to have a fair amount of confidence. You just have to kind of go for it and just say, I'm going to take, you know, a normal swing and play my shot. And if I'm relaxed and I do everything right and I don't worry about it too much, it will go where I want it to go. So that was a challenge. Now, I'm not going to say it was a problem because it was just that one hole, but it was definitely something to keep in mind. Keep in mind. So the front side is pretty straightforward. It's all right in front of you. There's nothing surprising or shocking or difficult, really difficult in the front hole. It's, it's, you know, it's decently challenging, but not extreme. The backside is a little bit more of a challenge. Number 10 looks harder than it is, definitely. Believe me, it's, you know, to play out in the fairway and chip to, and, uh, and then hit your shot to the green. That's all there is to it. It looks like it's a big long hole that goes off to the left and it's just not. None of the other holes are really tough, but they do require a decent amount of ball control. So while the course altogether is 6,900 yards long, it's well divided. There's, there aren't any really short holes and there aren't any really long ones. And there are some secrets, some Easter eggs on this course, which I will not talk about in detail, but let's just say, there are some fun shots in this course. It is a good challenge. And at the same time, it's not overblown. It's not like there's a lot of guys sitting out, sitting out there with cigars. Uh, not like a lot of guys out there driving really fancy cars. It's, you know, it's a, um, you know, log cabin style clubhouse. And it's just laid back. It's a really laid back kind of place. Most of the people there weren't wearing collared shirts. Definitely not upscale, not overblown, and it wasn't a crappy course either. Some courses, they're, they're cheap, you know, they're $25 with a cart to play it, and they're just not in good condition. Like I went, when I played Harmony Hills or some Holly Hills or whatever it was, they wanted, you know, it was $35 with a cart, plus I got a club out of the club bin. And that course was literally 
first time I've hit a ball <laughs> the year kind of course. It was okay for what it was, but it definitely was not as good as this course. In no form was it as good as this course. Although it did have some interesting shots on it, it still was not... It was at least a couple levels beyond uh, below this course. Whereas this course, I would give it at least a B minus. I would probably want to give it a, a B if some parts of the course were in better condition. But most of the course was actually in good condition. The only thing that really stands out to me that is in sort of a mess was, I think, the number 15. The par 3, number 15, which is right next to the number 10 on the left shoulder. That hole was not in the world's best condition, but actually once you got past the pond, it actually was in pretty decent condition. There's nice big traps around the green, and it was a lot of fun. Overall, a good course, but still kind of back in the woods, kind of, you know, log cabin kind of stuff, okay? No fescue, not heavy woods, not really dense, not a ball eater. A good solid B minus to B course somewhere in that range with a little bit of scenery to look at on the side and no houses. I just saw one little house from the course. Just one. That's Crawley Mountain Golf Course in Northwest Charlotte, just off the 85, Northwest Charlotte, North Carolina.